not gonna lie, news is pretty slow in November, in November. But never fear, cause Chris will scrape the barrel and bring you some cycling news. Cause it's the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Hello everyone and welcome to today's Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Brought to you by our sponsor, VeloSkin. The team behind VeloSkin are a collective of dedicated and experienced cyclists with one thing in common. They've all suffered gooch rash at one point in their lives and unable to find a cream that soothes and heals their needs. The team decided to take things into their own hands and design a range specifically formulated for the needs of cyclists. Creams for indoor and outdoor riding, post-shaving lotion, shave cream, soothing gel and moisturiser. If you want that gooch to feel great, head on over to VeloSkin. Tell them Pritch sent ya. Alright, and now that's out of the way, let's crack on with the new... Yep. Mm-hmm, no problem. Yeah, we'll do it now, yeah. Okay. All right, breaking news. And this morning, we had an anonymous message from someone asking if we could wish Simon Robinson, yeah, that's right, Simon Robinson, a very happy birthday. They also said Simon is a huge fan of the show. And Simon, not only that, they said in the message that if I wished you a happy birthday, whatever your heart desires tonight is yours. <laughs> So happy birthday, Simon, from all of us here at the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. It's just me. And also, when you're in bed tonight, make sure you think of me. Wait, no, don't think of me. Thank me. Thank me without thinking about me. Otherwise, it's just weird. Happy birthday, Simon. Hish. Alright then, so let's crack on with some news and I've had to really scrape the bottom of the barrel to try and find some news to bring to you, but we have news and that news is all about doping. Now the UCI are set to retest samples from 2016 and 2017 in light of the Operation Adelas information. Intelligence from law enforcement could yield more anti-doping rule violations. Now to bring you up to speed on this story, back in February 2019, authorities raided the Nordic Skiing World Championships. They eventually uncovered 40 blood bags stored in Germany in a garage linked to a former Milram doctor Mark Schmidt. German authorities later confirmed that 21 athletes from five different sports and eight different countries were under investigation for blood doping. As ever here on the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show, I will endeavour to remember to try and update you on this story, if I, if I can remember, if it's worth updating you on it. Um, but as new information comes to light, there's a good chance that more and more cyclists are going to be named in this. Now, you know I love a bit of speculation, but let's not speculate here. Let's not put anybody through the mill and put their names in the comments down below. Let's wait until we hear exactly who else is involved in this saga. And sticking with my favorite subject, doping, Sophie De Verst admits to failing doping control. The Park Hotel Valkenberg rider failed an out of competition dope control. Her team has announced that it has suspended her pending analysis of her B sample. De Verst wrote on her Facebook page, this is a message I never wanted to write. To my astonishment, I've received the message yesterday that I bloody tested positive for exogenous steroids during an out of competition test on September the 18th. For me, ethical and responsible clean sports have always been paramount. I am therefore completely in dark as to how this could have happened. I am completely devastated. The worst possible nightmare has happened to me. That being that she's got caught for using steroids when she shouldn't have. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. I really do. I feel everybody should be given the benefit of the doubt. I'm just too, I'm just too bloody nice. And I know what a lot of people will be saying now. Shut up, knobhead. Clearly she's cheated and she's been caught. Don't pander to her. And if she has, then go on, do one woman. But if she hasn't, like if there is a genuine reason... See, this is the issue that I have and why I always feel like I should give the benefit of the doubt. If there is a genuine reason that this has happened by mistake, then potentially this rider's career and reputation is going to be in tatters. Now, I know 99% of the time, they just cheat in mother. But there's always that 1% that potentially could have had something. I don't know what could have happened. But anyway, Sophie DeVerst, her B sample is probably going to come back and it's going to say the same. And she's going to get banned for doping. Because she probably doped. Probably. 
In other news within the professional peloton, Total Direct Energy announced their brand new kit for 2020 and this was my reaction when I saw it. Wait, in that last year's kit? So there you go, bit more red on it. Other than that, pretty much the same as last year. Creative. Now this next story sounds like something straight out of a Hollywood blockbuster. A rider taken from a club and given a contract on the biggest team in the world of professional cycling. But no, it's not Hollywood. It's just another ordinary day in the life of Ethan Hayter. Team Ineos announced the signing of the 21-year-old Ethan Hayter on Wednesday night. Hayter is on a three-year contract with the team. Hayter isn't just a club rider that's been taken from obscurity and placed in Team Ineos with the hopes that he's going to be a good rider. He's obviously part of the GB Academy already and he is an absolute phenomenon. I think in terms of his road career at Team Ineos, well, there's no better place for him. So it's going to be interesting and exciting to see how far he actually goes in his road career. But I think for next year, Ethan Hayter's focus is going to be all about the Olympics. That guy has got potential to win a gold bloody medal. All right, and then the final story of today is coming from one of the local papers here in the UK. Not local here, local down south somewhere in Kenilworth. Anyway, right, this story, when you read this headline, it boils your blood. But then you read the story and you go, oh, actually, that's an amazing thing that people are doing, but who's that knobhead abusing them? The headline reads, Kenilworth youngsters suffer abuse after cycling through Abbey Fields as part of cycle bus scheme. Now, without any context of this, this could simply be a gang of BMX bandits ripping through a park, defecating on people, <laughs> urinating on old people, swearing and being general asbos. But then you read the story and you realise it's not. These are the kids that have been abused. Bloody youngsters. Youngsters, I tell they. So the Cycle Bus Initiative was launched in Kenilworth last month and happens each Friday when lead cyclists pick up children along the way and a group of about 30 cyclists go to school together. Now this was started by a fan, a huge fan of this show, a man by the name of Adam Tranter. If you're in the industry, you probably know who he is, but he's the MD of Fusion Media, which is like a, a PR and digital consultancy agency. I hope I've got that right. Uh, within the, the cycling and the running world. In fact, Fusion are the people behind the running channel on, on YouTube. Make sure you follow the link in the description. Adam, I'm never going to charge you for that plug. Anyway, Adam set this cycle bus scheme up after a couple of parents kept asking him how they could get involved in cycling their kids to school because he was taking his two twin boys on an electric cargo bike and eventually more and more parents were asking how they could get involved in this and how they could get their kids to school via cycling. And hey presto, the cycle bus scheme was set up. So this whole story kicked off on Friday the 22nd of November. Adam said, unfortunately on Friday morning we were verbally abused by another park user. This person took issue with our cycling in the park without being able to see the positive we're doing. When we asked, do you think it will be safe to take children on the roads outside? They said, I don't care. Not bad. Then Adam continued and said, at the time it ruined our day, but we are not going to let it get us down in the long term. Since the confrontation, we've been flooded with support by the community and had well-wishing messages from all over the world, even as far as Australia. He added, we are a volunteer and parent-led group who help young children cycle to school safely. However, according to bylaws, there's no cycling in Abbey Fields Park, which means, technically, the person giving the abuse out may have been lawfully correct, but the way they went about it is morally wrong. Let's just picture this and try and put ourselves in, in the person who felt the need to abuse these kids. Let's, let's put our... Uh, Let's put ourselves in their position. So they're having a nice walk down the, down the park. Oh, this is nice. Oh, what's that? Clearly visible from miles away. Oh, that looks like they're young children cycling in high visibility. Yeah. Oh, they've all got helmets on and they're all going at a reasonably sensible speed. Oh, isn't that nice to see? <laughs> but no, that didn't happen, did it? This person saw these children and went, the f***ing hell you can do in here, you f***ing idiots. Get on, get road, you obeds. Or something to that effect. I don't know exactly what he said. But come on, what the hell? You would rather these children risk their lives out on the open road with buses 
where an experienced cyclist was killed two years ago. That's chuck them on the road. Just so what? So you don't have to take one step to your left and allow a couple of kids to go through. What an absolute... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, some people just haven't got anything better to do, have they? So if you're watching this random person down in Kenilworth, abusing children, think twice. Because the cycling community is, 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 is strong. We will find you. We will name and shame you. And hopefully, you'll stop giving these parents and these kids such a hard time. Come on, they're just cycling, they're getting fit. They're doing good, not only for themselves, but for the environment. And we should all be taking a leaf out of Mr. Tranter's book and trying to start these things. I mean, my, I can literally see Milo's school from here and as soon as he's old enough, I'm gonna kick him out the door and he can ride there himself. Great parenting. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I'm sporadically going live with my live streams and if you wanna be part of one, in fact, I'm still not gonna say anything. Just make sure you hit that subscription button, that notification button so you know when I go live because you are gonna wanna know when I go live. Whether you stay in this stream or not, you're gonna wanna know over winter, especially in December. Said too much already. Eesh.